Welcome to another Word Defibrillator to kickstart your day with I, Sean Collard. Word Defibrillator for today, where we kickstart your day from a word within the word. Confess to one another, be therefore your faults, your slips, your false steps, your offenses, your sins, and pray also for one another that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart the earnest, heartfelt, continual prayer or continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available, dynamic in its working. How nice is that? And then it goes on that way we left off to verse 17. Elijah was a human being with a nature such as we have, with feelings, affections, and constitution like ours. And he prayed earnestly for it not to rain, and no rain fell on the earth for three years and six months. Now, what's that saying to you and I is, is that he is as human as you are, and he did it. There was nothing special about him, nothing different to you or anybody else. He was just a man of God, and he prayed earnestly for it not to rain. And what happened? It never rained. And then he prayed again, and the heaven supplied rain, and the land produced its crops as usual. So he turned it on. Well, he first turned it off, and then he turned it back on. How amazing is that? My brethren, if anyone among you strays from the truth and falls into error, and another person brings him back to God, let the latter one be sure that whoever turns a sinner from his evil course will save. That's one soul from death and will cover a multi multitude of sins. Produce the pardon of many sins committed by the convert. Now, that's a strange one. Did you hear what that said? It said, the other guy benefits. How amazing is that? I kind of thought that it's a good idea to pray for others because you're going to benefit because it covers a, multiple, a multitude of sins. But maybe not, eh? Maybe not. And, and as we've learned with James, it goes backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards as to going back to the last topic. It's like when you do these evaluation things for companies for your job, they'll ask you questions and then they hide questions that that uh, recheck if you made the right answer the last time. So they kind of ask it from a different angle. And James seems to keep on covering the same topics. So he's talking about confess to one another, pray for one another. And then it goes into Elijah who says, you know what, he was a human being with nature just as you have. He prayed for the rain to stop and it stopped. Not just for a moment, three years and six months. Then he prayed again, and the heavens supplied rain, and the land produced its crops as usual. Now, it does say that he prayed earnestly, and earnestly means warmly, zealously, uh, eagerly, with real desire. Now, desire means want. Father, I want. Um, my sister-in-law is being diagnosed with cancer, and we're just going through what's going to happen, and the doctors and all that. And I said to God, I want her healing. I'm asking as a personal desire. I want it in Jesus' name. And being in agony, he prayed more earnestly that he should earnestly contend for the faith once delivered to the saints with fixed attention, with eagerness. How amazing is that? They're kind of like, come on, God, we've got this. And we earnestly desire it. And then in that telling us that, you know what? When he prayed for the rain to come, it had benefits again. Our prayers have outworkings where the crops were produced by the land. Then in 19, bam, back to it. My brethren, if any of you stray from the truth, fall into error, and another person brings him back, let the latter one be sure that whoever turns a sinner from his evil course will save that one's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. How amazing is 
that, that you have an opportunity to save a soul just for stepping in and say, hey, can I pray for you? I had two amazing answers, uh, questions the day before. Now, when I go train, I do not bring any evangelism or anything into it. I'm there to, I, I'm there to work. I'm there to serve a service. I'm there in need, and I'm in submission to the guys who run the facility. One of the kids said to me, oh, so you've got a fear of dying. So I said, no ways. There's no ways I could ever fear dying. But I do have a fear of not living. And I want to live as long as I can to be able to turn a sinner from his evil course. Never told them that, but that's what's in my heart. The next day, out of nowhere, the kids say to me, different bunch of people, eh? They say, Sean, I want to ask you, what happens after you die. Now I'm teaching them interpersonal skills. I don't know why they're asking me this question. And as Jesus says, he spoke, when people spoke from their lips, he always used to answer their hearts, never their questions. So being transaction that I'm there to teach people skills, I can't now go into this whole spiritual debate. So I just walk up to them and I say, guys, I'm going to give you one answer. We can go out for coffee if you want to. But I'm going to give you one answer because you know this is a transaction and I've got to stick to it. So they look at me and they're all waiting. So I go, I never die. And it was silent. And they looked at one another and I just carried on training. <laughs> so, Heavenly Father, I pray in Jesus' name that this exciting life that we live, Father, you give us opportunities every single day to be able to reach out and touch a life, Father. Even if it's just a touch. What an incredible opportunity there. By our deeds, by our words, by just a smile or our eyes, we can add value to a person's heart. Father, I pray that we don't become so involved with what's going on in our lives and how we don't have but to be so grateful that we do have, Father, that we are wealthy enough to do what you've called us to do. We are tall enough. We are strong enough. We are beautiful enough. We know enough to be able to, at that moment where you give us that opportunity, Father, be it once a day, be it twice a day, that we reach out to focus on those who stand before us. And we are able either by word, by deed, or within our hearts. Turn people to you from the place that they in. Father, we know that people don't necessarily seek evil for the sake of evil. Father, they mistake it for the good that they seek. And Father, we pray that we will be that manifestation of the good that they are seeking. That manifestation of you and the kingdom. That, Father, that we will be able to save that one soul from death. Father, knowing that it will cover a multitude of sins. Procuring the pardon of the many sins committed by that convert. I pray for this in Jesus' name. Earnestly. Yeah. Great. <laughs>